In this chapter, we'll take a detailed look at the pool. Understanding how to use the pool will help you organize and edit complex projects, keep your projects properly backed up, and help you keep your hard drive usage under control. I'll also show you a couple of handy tricks. By the end of this chapter, you should have a solid understanding of how to open and navigate the pool, view and edit clip attributes, search for media from the pool, import media to the pool, place clips onto your project timeline, and clean up unused files. We'll also go over how to use the pool to browse removable media. Now it's easy to overlook the pool when you're first starting out. And at first glance, it's also easy to confuse the pool with media bay. To clarify the relationship between the two, let's start by looking at their intended functions. Media bay is used to find files anywhere in your system, but the pool is used to hold files for one specific project. There is only one media bay for all of Cubase, but there is a separate pool for every project. The pool has three primary folders, audio, video, and trash. The audio folder contains the audio clips used in your project. The video folder contains all of the video assets used for the project. And the trash folder contains clips which have been deleted from the project, but not from the hard drive. It retains these files until you choose to delete them permanently. Inside the audio folder, you can see all of the various clips. You can use the controls at the top of the window to play clips, loop them, and adjust your playback volume. You'll see a lot of information displayed in these columns, which are known as attributes. And this can include things like how many times a clip is used in the active project, whether it's in musical mode, when it was created, and so forth. Some of these columns simply display information, but others let you make adjustments. For example, we can activate and deactivate musical mode. We can adjust clip tempo. And we can change the root key of a clip. Changing the key here won't affect how the clip sounds, but it will change how the clip behaves when it's transposed. In this example, the pool only contains audio which we recorded, but we can also add material to our project by using the pool to import media. To do this, we'll use the search, preview, and import tools in that order. First, we can search for new material. Click the search button if it isn't already activated. Next, type in the name we want to search for and select a location. Then use the preview tools to listen to the results. Once you've located a piece of audio that you want to use, click Import. Cubase may ask you if you want to copy or reference the selected file. This is the same concept we were discussing during editing. Choosing Copy will create a duplicate file. This will consume more hard drive space, but allows you to make changes without disturbing the original version. Now let's jump back over to Preferences for just a moment. If you open the Editing Preferences, you can personalize how Cubase imports audio. For example, if you want imports copied to the working directory, you can select that option here. Then select Use Settings. Now the question won't pop up every time you import something. You can also import by using the context menu. Right click and select Import Medium. This method gives you a larger search window and a little easier navigation. Once you've imported some clips, you can insert them into your project several ways. You can drag them to the project window to create events. If you don't have a track set up, Cubase will automatically create one. You can also right click and use the Insert into Project options to specify where the audio should go. The Pools context menu has some other handy tools. You have additional import and export functions, including the Extract Audio from Video function. The Select in Project option lets you find clips in your active project. Select a clip in the pool, then click Select in Project, and Cubase highlights the associated events in the project window. This menu also lets you access your plugin library and all processes from the audio menu. To use any of these options, select a clip and then select the desired process. This is just a different way to access the same tools we looked at earlier, but without opening multiple windows. Finally, there are tools here for cleaning up unused media. The minimize files command is similar to the cleanup function in that it eliminates unused audio, but the cleanup function works on your entire system and the minimize files command only works on the active project. 
Also, there's an important difference between this minimize function and the minimizing associated with the backup function. If you minimize during backup, the unused audio is only removed from the backup project. But this minimize files command removes unused audio from the original project and the files will be gone for good. For this reason, we recommend you only minimize the project once it's completely finished. The prepare archive function gathers up all of the various pieces of a project and gets them ready for backup. Specifically, Cubase will copy any referenced files into the pool. You also have the option to freeze edits, which results in a smaller file, but you can't adjust your edits later. However, if you choose to freeze edits, then you don't need to archive the edits folder. If you reuse files in many projects, like a collection of drum loops, for example, then the libraries function will be helpful. This function allows you to organize media files in one place, called a library, and then reference them in many projects. A library is similar to a pool in concept, but one library can serve many projects, whereas each pool is connected to a single project. For example, let's say you purchase a CD of audio loops. If you designate them as a library, they're all available from inside your project. You can audition them easily, and you can use them in multiple projects by referencing them in their current location. Libraries can also be used for content that you use repeatedly across many projects for a specific client, for example, like jingles, intros, or audio logos. Here's a tip for using the pool. We've all come across promotional sound libraries on DVD. Sometimes they're included with magazines or bundled with software, and they usually contain thousands of sounds of which only a handful will be really useful. So in most cases, what you don't want to do is import the entire DVD. So what's the best way to browse the contents? Now you could use MediaBay, and we'll see that in the next chapter. MediaBay is designed to find and organize media, but it's a little cumbersome for casual browsing. Also, MediaBay will assume that you want to import everything on the DVD, so it will show you every file in alphabetical order. Now that's an excellent way to organize, but it's not the best way to browse, especially if the files are grouped by genre or manufacturer. The best way I've found to browse around these libraries is using the pool and the import medium window. This lets me explore the DVD visually. I can see how the publisher has things organized and I can navigate quickly to the areas that interest me. Then I can use the previewer to listen to the file. As I come across keepers, I can import them from here or I can open Media Bay and point at the folders I like. Let's move on to the next chapter and get to know Media Bay just a little better.